What you are about to hear does not belong to the realm of fiction, nor to the foggy territory of internet theories. This is a detailed reconstruction of real observations, verifiable calculations, and independent analyses that place Atlas among the most baffling objects ever to pass through the neighborhoods of our system. Over the past few months, a sequence of high-resolution images, spectroscopic measurements, photometric comparisons, and cold numbers have put multiple astronomers on alert, including Avi Loeb himself, who insists, there is something about Atlas that simply does not fit. The purpose of this script is to guide you, step by step, through this puzzle. We will walk through the visual anomalies, the energetic inconsistencies, the spectral signals, and the weight of statistical coincidences. We will follow the thread of the hypotheses proposed by Loeb and understand why some scientists consider it premature to label Atlas as just another comet. You will see the calculations that challenge traditional explanations, the comparisons that dismantle lazy interpretations, and a clear, meticulous recap of the 12 anomalies known so far. The most recent images of Atlas captured by large telescopes, professional observatories, and highly skilled amateur operators reveal a scenario that should not exist. The first surprise is a jet clearly pointed toward the star that is the mother of our solar system, an orientation opposite to what would be expected from particles ejected by the combined action of heating and stellar wind. And, as if that were not enough, an anti-tail appears both before and after perihelion, maintaining shape, spatial coherence, and brightness in a way incompatible with what we typically call a perspective illusion. Natural anti-tails do exist, but they require specific configurations, and even then, rarely persist with the level of stability observed in Atlas. Imagine the scene, an object coming from outside the system, crossing the inner zone, surrounded by a jet that defies direction, and by a geometric structure that simply refuses to behave like blown dust. Fine, particles should disperse. Pushed by the stellar wind, they should stretch in the opposite direction. Yet, in Alice, they seem to obey a different mechanism, organized, directional, and possibly independent of solar radiation. Among the references in your source material, one detail stands out, a possible correlation between neutrino flux variations and recent behavior observed in Atlas. Neutrinos interact so weakly with matter that they normally provide little insight into local astrophysical events. Yet some particle observatories reported temporary fluctuations that align with Atlas's anomalous phases. These signals don't prove anything by themselves, but they are difficult to ignore. What makes this more intriguing is that such variations match better with internal energetic processes, such as asymmetric heating or sudden releases of volatile compounds than with ordinary solar-driven sublimation. Classic comet behavior produces predictable spikes in jets and coma expansion. But when these appear to coincide with slight oscillations in neutrino readings, the picture shifts. It suggests an activity pattern that traditional comet physics does not fully explain. If this correlation holds even marginally, it may indicate that Atlas undergoes something deeper than surface layer ice sublimation. We may be dealing with a more complex internal structure, with chambers or volatile pockets activating in irregular sequences and producing energetic outputs invisible to traditional photometry. It is too early for bold conclusions, but too late to pretend nothing unusual is happening. For now, the debate remains open. But one thing is certain. If neutrinos are entering this story, even as indirect markers, then Atlas demands a new interpretative framework. Visually, it is a spectacle. Scientifically, it is a problem. A problem big enough that many have begun to suspect we may not be dealing with the comet at all. The calculations accompanying these images are not philosophical speculations. They are basic equations of energy, thermal balance, and jet dynamics. When compared to the real images, they produce a structural incompatibility. Atlas would be ejecting material at such a high rate that it would require a surface area far greater than the estimated size of its core. Here is the central knot. To sublimate enough ice to create jets this long, bright, and collimated, the object would need to absorb energy from the star that is the mother of our solar system at an intensity hundreds of times greater than its available area would allow. Even assuming generous absorption coefficients and an optimistic composition of volatiles, the math simply does not work. And more. 
The simultaneous ejection of jets oriented both toward the star and away from it is a behavior that requires internal energy sources or directional mechanisms. Comets, no matter how active, do not display this type of controlled symmetry. Solar heating does not act this way. Ejecting material against the thermal flow is like launching cold vapor against a fire. Something must be pushing it. When the volume of ejected mass is compared to the time available near perihelion, the contradiction intensifies. There is not enough area. There is not enough energy. There is no simple natural mechanism that explains what we see. Avi Loeb has been insisting on a point that should be obvious, but rarely is. When facing strange data, the role of science is not to protect traditional explanations, but to expand the possibilities under investigation. He notes that the number of confirmed interstellar objects is ridiculously small. Only a handful detected so far, and assuming they all behave like local comets, is an unjustified extrapolation. Loeb argues that we spend fortunes searching for hypothetical particles that never appear, like certain dark matter candidates. Yet we turn up our noses when someone suggests that an interstellar object might have technological properties. Why? What objective criterion makes one hypothesis less acceptable than another? In other words, questioning the pattern is not speculation, it is simply doing science. Dogma, yes, is the problem. And Atlas is testing that boundary. Let's talk about energy again, because this is where the natural explanation loses ground. Suppose, for example, that Atlas's plume were composed mainly of carbon dioxide. Sublimation of this material requires a certain amount of energy per unit mass. Now ask, how much energy does the object receive from the star that is the mother of our solar system? And how much mass would it be ejecting? When you place these numbers side by side, you discover that Atlas would be doing far more work than it should be capable of performing. It is like a flashlight powered by weak batteries, emitting the brightness of a lighthouse simply incompatible with its energy source. Replace carbon dioxide with water, which is more difficult to sublimate, and the problem worsens. Adjust parameters. Try optimistic estimates. The result is always the same. The conventional explanation cannot support the intensity and persistence of the jets. And we are not talking about dispersed, turbulent jets. We are talking about collimated filaments, long needles of matter stretching across millions of kilometers with surprisingly uniform apparent thickness. Natural behavior, not under the current model. Technological behavior, hard to dismiss. Technological hypotheses, what this would mean in practice. We talk about a technological hypothesis. We are not imagining glowing spacecraft like in films. We are referring to this. Advanced civilizations may launch artifacts that drift through space for thousands of years. These artifacts can naturally become coated in dust and ice, taking on the appearance of a comet. They can also use propulsion mechanisms that release visible plumes. Such an artifact could control directional jets for trajectory adjustments, have internal heat systems that melt or sublimate accumulated materials, display differentiated spectral signatures, such as excess nickel, release small devices, such as probes, which would be detected as unusual fragments. All of this is technically plausible within an advanced engineering scale. None of these evidences, by themselves, proves technology. But when you combine inverted jets, anomalous nickel ratios, unexplained accelerations, and extreme collimation, the technological hypothesis stops being fantasy and becomes just another valid line of investigation. The idea that Atlas may be artificial triggers an emotional reaction in many astronomers. There is fear, discomfort, and instinctive defensiveness. Because accepting this possibility changes the entire discourse. We are no longer talking about an exotic phenomenon. We are talking about the first direct evidence of an intelligent extraterrestrial civilization. There are political and social concerns as well. Which nation would lead investigations? Who would have access to the data? How would public repercussions be handled? Would an international protocol be necessary? All of this is more frightening than admitting that an object might have a strange chemical composition. But Loeb insists, emotional or institutional difficulty should not interfere with analysis. Atlas deserves curiosity, not automatic rejection. The close passage to Earth is a unique opportunity. The measurements we make now will make all the difference in future interpretation. Here is the essential checklist. First, 
high resolution spectroscopy. This will allow us to measure the velocity of the plume and its composition. If there are unusual metallic signatures or artificial ratios, we will see them immediately. Second, light polarization. This data reveals the size, shape, and structure of particles. Natural dust has specific patterns. Structured bonds or process materials have others. Third, acceleration monitoring. If there is directional propulsion, we will detect consistent, repeated, measurable, non-gravitational deviations. Fourth, thermal signatures. Natural objects glow according to their solar heating. Artifacts with internal heat glow differently. These four elements together form the core of what we need to observe. To avoid extremes, it is helpful to organize the hypotheses into three main scenarios. Scenario A, extreme natural anomalies. Atlas would be an unprecedented composite with unusual thermal and physical properties. This would explain part of the phenomena, but struggle to justify the collimation of the plumes. Scenario B, a fragmented structure of large mass. Atlas could be a cluster of aggregated objects, like a school of fragments. This would explain a higher apparent mass, but would not justify directional jets. Scenario CA, technological artifact. Controlled propulsion, process materials, directional ejectors, non-natural thermal emissions. All anomalies fit this model, but it requires a radical paradigm shift. Each scenario generates specific predictions. And the role of science is to test them, not discard them out of discomfort. What science should do now, from common sense to concrete action? There are three important actions. First, maintain coordinated observations. With telescopes and spectrographs, working as a network, sharing data in real time. Second, prioritize measurements that actually discriminate between hypotheses, such as spectroscopy, polarimetry, and acceleration monitoring. Third, plan interception missions for future interstellar objects. We are not talking about fiction. We are talking about scientific prudence. The cost is high, but the reward is enormous. And above all, it is essential to maintain transparency of the data. Nothing feeds misinformation more than closed doors. Here is the complete panel. The 12 anomalies assembled clearly, directly, and didactically. Each one creates tension with current models, but together they form a disturbing dossier. First anomaly, retrograde trajectory aligned with the ecliptic. An interstellar visitor should not enter aligned with the plane of the planets. The statistical probability is very low. Second anomaly, jets pointing toward the star that is the mother of our solar system. A behavior contrary to typical sublimation physics. Third anomaly, very high core mass. Estimates far above what is expected for interstellar travelers. Fourth anomaly, unlikely sequence of planetary approaches. Passages that resemble a calculated route, not a random path. Fifth anomaly, excess nickel in the plume. A signature more consistent with industrial processes than with natural comets. Sixth anomaly, low water content. An unusual behavior considering the observed brightness. Seventh anomaly, strong negative optical polarization. Light responses incompatible with standard cometary dust. Eighth anomaly, approximate alignment with the region of the, wow, signal. Uh, an unlikely coincidence, but statistically notable. Ninth anomaly, abrupt surge of bluish brightness. An intense coloration unusual for known comets. Tenth anomaly, impossible energy balance. Jets requiring more energy than the core could absorb. Eleventh anomaly, significant non-gravitational acceleration. Internal or directional forces appear to be acting. Twelfth anomaly, jets collimated over millions of kilometers. A persistence no natural model reproduces. This set forms the backbone of the mystery. Ignoring it would be unscientific. Atlas forces us to contemplate a simple lesson. When reality does not fit the explanations, it is the explanation that must change, not reality. Science evolves when people decide to look at the strange and say, let's investigate. Automatic refusal is a form of intellectual blindness, and Atlas has arrived to test our vision. What we have today is clear. There is no single explanation that resolves all the data. There are discrepancies, unlikely coincidences, objective anomalies, and signals that deserve rigorous attention. If Atlas is natural, it will expand our understanding. If it is not, 
then we are facing the greatest scientific milestone of our era. Either way, ignoring it would be unforgivable. And now I ask you, what do you think Atlas really is? A new type of natural body that challenges our models? Or something technological, designed and sent by intelligences beyond our own? Comment and share your theories. And keep following the next data may rewrite everything we thought we knew.